As you know, Hapkido, being a Korean system, is very famous for its kicks. And in Kamba Hapkido, we have retained most of the important kicks. Uh, although, like I said before, maybe we don't kick as high as, uh, as traditional systems. The next kick we're going to present to you uh, is the roundhouse kick. Very effective kick. Now again, it can be performed with the front leg or the back leg. We're going to show you a couple of both. The areas that we choose in Kamba Hapkido are the inside of the thigh here, or if it's in a reverse stance this way in this case, the outside of the thigh. Okay, that's a tremendously devastating shot here. Also, side of the body into the floating ribs area. Okay, if the person standing to you sideways, it could be directed to the midsection here. So different targets according to the relationship you are to your opponent. Let me show you a couple. Uh, we'll start with the front leg, switch stance, Pedro. Start with the front leg. Okay, roundhouse kick from here. First one, I'm going to shoot a high here into his body. Here, like that, roundhouse kick, here. Right. Then the next one, we're going to go a little lower in the thigh area here. Okay, so you're going to see, bam. Okay, now if he reverses stance on me, watch, I'm going to hit with a low kick into the inside of the thigh, here. And he's going to do it to me, here. And that's your roundhouse kick. Of course, it can be used for the head too and other targets, but as I said, for, for seat self-defense, we don't recommend kicking too high. Your next two kicks are going to be the inside crescent and now outside crescent. Okay, those are sweeping kicks. Okay, remind you a little bit uh, of the windshield wipers of a car, in and out. Okay, the first one inside, again, directed maybe at the center part of the body, coming this way. Get the leg out into the target, into the person. It can also be used to remove an obstruction. Let's say he has a weapon in his hands or something. From here, kick the wrist and move in for your finish. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate just a couple of them. Okay, so from here, one. One. Okay, this is your inside crescent kick. The outside goes the opposite direction. Comes out this way. Again, I can kick the face, but I don't recommend it for street uh, encounters. And here, this is your outside crescent. Again, this could be used to remove an obstruction here. From here, bam, and move into the person, okay? So, outside crescent, we're gonna review them all. Inside crescent, roundhouse kick from the front leg, roundhouse kick from the back leg. Okay, those are your three kick requirements for this belt level. You have two punches in your requirements for orange belt. They are the uppercut and the hook punch. Some martial arts styles don't even teach these two punches. Uh, we decided to teach them because they are very effective and they are very used in street fight. So you might as well know them so you know how to defend uh, from them and you know how to apply them. Okay, the first one is the uppercut, strictly a boxer punch, but we need to learn it and to, and to use it too. It's directed either to the body or to the face. Again, body, face, okay? Uh, body, face. Keep on alternating, Pedro. Good, don't stop. Watch where the target is, watch this body movement. I'm gonna move around a little bit so you see all kinds of different angle, like on a 3D. Watch, he keeps on hitting. You see how he moves his hip into the punch? He uses his whole body, hip, shoulder, good footwork, and powerful punches into the body or into the head. And that's your uppercut. The next one is the hook punch, okay? Hook punch is nothing but like you have a front kick and a roundhouse kick, then you have a jab or a roundhouse punch, okay? It's called a hook punch. Um, many um, styles, they teach to do the hook punch with the fist this way, horizontal. Uh, it's okay for a boxer because they have gloves on, on them. We don't. With bare hand, if you punch a person this way and you get the bone real good there, you may break the last two knuckles very easily. So what we do, we use that as a vertical punch also. So our hook punch comes this way. It's usually directed to the head or again to the floating ribs, into the body, coming this way. But most of the time it's directed to the head, coming circularly from here in a circular motion. 
Okay, again, we use, we prefer the vertical fist into this punch. And that's your hook punch. We're going to go back now to the areas of breakaway. You're going to recognize, of course, some of the similarities with the other ones that we've done before. Same thing, light hand right away, a quick distraction if needed, okay? This time you've got to remember to step outside of his foot, outside of his lead foot there, okay? Because there's going to be a follow-up that you need to know. You're going to strike again the radial nerve, like before, using either the pseudo hand, the bottom here, or even a hammer fist, whatever is more comfortable for you. And you're stepping in and you're breaking away, spin real quickly, bring the other hand up for protection and strike the center mass of his body with a good elbow strike. Okay, I will show it to you a couple of more times and one time from the other side too. So again, here, a little uh, this time a little more dynamically, okay? He grabs me, one, two, follow up here if you need to, okay? Now, let me show it to you from the other side, you get a little bit of a different perspective. Okay, from here. Okay, slowly this time. Light hand again, step outside of his foot here. Strike as you're pulling out. Bring the hand up to protect your face and strike him into the center mass with an elbow. If he bends over forward when you do that, finish with an other elbow to the face. And you're done. The next breakaway, we call this the downward breakaway because of the angle and direction in which you're gonna be going. Okay, again, all the same elements. Light hand, protection with the other hand, step in. This time what you want to do is step toe-to-toe -to -toe with the person. Maybe a little bit slightly inside, but not too much. So from here, one, push your elbow into him and angle your hand that is going to aim toward your opposite knee, your cross knee. So this is the move. I'm going to do it dynamically one time so you know what we're talking about. It grabs me, one, this is my technique. Then the follow-up is the elbow to the face, or back fist, or pseudo to the neck. Depends how close he is and what you want to do. Now slowly, one more time, to pay attention for the details. He grabs me, light hand, stepping in, push my elbow into him, angle my hand, shoot out into your cross knee. This hand is here for protection. I come back with a strike, different type of strike, according to where he's going to be in relationship to my body. And that's your next uh, breakaway. Number seven breakaway, uh, very similar to the one we just did, to number six, very, very similar. The direction is different this time, okay? So in this case, same thing, light hand, other hand up for protection, step in the same way as before, push his elbow in, okay, by using your elbow, your body. But this time, instead of angling up and shooting down, you're gonna angle horizontally. Turn your hand, see how hard it is for him to break, trying to do it as slowly as possible. See, it's almost impossible to hold. Watch, you're already breaking away. Then from here, horizontally around your center mass, this way, break out, and then come back either with fist, pseudo hand. If he follows you a little bit with his head as you're breaking away, then you can go with your elbow, of course, okay? But the movement is the same, okay? One more time, from here, one push in, break away violently, wham, this way, come back with your strike according to where it is. The next one, number eight, again, very similar, okay, you change in directions all the time. The first one we went down, second one we went in the middle, horizontally, this one we're going to go up. Why? Because maybe it's got a weapon or something or it's trying to uppercut you, so you want to protect the bottom part of your body. Uh, and this is the strike now that you want to do as a follow-up. I'll show you. From here, same thing. This time, angle, push, still push in, but angle your elbow down. And as you're breaking away, break away. We did the knee first, then here. Now we're going to do the shoulder. Break away to the shoulder, this way. This one checks and traps his, his, his hand, and you can strike immediately according to what his body is. Again. So when you do it very dynamically, it looks a lot better, you know, than when you do it slowly. So from here, we're going to try one time dynamically. It grabs me, bam, and there you are. See, it's very fast when you do it uh, dynamically. One more time, here, protect low, push in, break away, trap, strike at the same time. Follow up if you need to. The next breakaway involves a new element, a takedown. You're going to take your opponent down 
using a breakaway. Okay, we're going to show it to you one time dynamically, the, the very first time. So you, you get an idea of the technique, and then without saying, distraction goes without saying. Rotate your hand this time, this way, outside. As you're rotating, trap the hand. The problem is if he's holding me and I kick him real hard and I don't immediately go for the trap, he's going to let go. He's gone. Now I've got to do something else. Maybe it's what I want to do, but maybe it's not. So from here this time, as I'm kicking, I'm trapping. I'm bringing up. Okay? From here, I torque him. Now watch how interesting where you are here. You see his thumb? This is a very important element of this technique. You push down in real life, you dislocate his thumb backward. You dislocate it with your, with your technique, okay? In class, of course, be very careful with your partner. So here, here we go again. One, trapping, torquing, snapping the thumb, then follow this direction very simply. Step in, and with your forearm, don't use your hand. Your forearm, take down. This is your arm bar. If you want it from here, you can take him straight to the ground and finish here in different type of locks. Okay, let's show it to you one time from this side. Different angle completely. One, coming around, trapping, rotating, snapping the thumb, attacking the tricep tendon here, stepping over, taking him down. I'm gonna turn around now, so I'll show you here where we are. Okay, and from here, apply pressure, downward pressure. Bring him down all the way. Okay? And that's a very good technique for you to start learning the arm bars. The next defense against the same side wrist grab. Okay? Very important wrist lock that you will see. Okay? Very common to many martial arts. Again, light hand, protection, distraction. Coming around this way, again in circular motion. Like before, the only difference this time, very important. The thumb, instead of being out, like we did before, the thumb was on the outside of his wrist, this time you're going to place his wrist in your V, between your index finger and your thumb. You're capturing him this way. And then from here, continue rotate, then slide your other hand up, join both hands for support, elbows close to you, you have your wrist lock, which by the way, in this case, is also locking the elbow and the shoulder. Straight line here. Now all you have to do is go forward, and he goes to the ground, locked up, okay? The more pressure you put in, the higher you raise this behind the head, the more the pain, okay? One more time, maybe this time a little more dynamically. One, two, lock Oof. in, okay? Let me show it to you one time from the other side. From here, very slowly this time, the distraction, Bring up this way as you trap him. Same time. Here. Rotate him. Come back here. Join both hands. This is very important here. Close to you. Put pressure. Take him down. And this is your technique. Now, one thing you don't want to do is do any of this. Operating distant, this way, with your elbows away from your body. You cannot ex exercise enough energy and pressure and leverage. You just can't. It's impossible. From here, he can pull away, strike me, move around. But once you bring him into you here, and don't stay away from him, walk with him. You'll take him to the ground every time, no problem. Okay? So, this is uh, your uh, next uh, defense against sensei wrist grab. We're going to begin a new area now, the area of cross grabs, okay? This is when, in this case, his right hand grabs my right hand, or maybe his left hand grabs my left hand, okay? Cross grab. In the very first one, I'm going to introduce the concept of counter grabbing, okay? He grabs me right now, I'll do my destruction, move away from this oncoming threat, punch, whatever it's going to be, so I'll move away a little bit, one, and I'll move here. This is my counter grab. I'm going to rotate and place the palm of my hand in top of his forearm. I maintain my index finger extended. That's for key energy as well as guidance. 
okay, and it strengthens the bone structure of the other fingers. Those are the reason why we do that in combat half kilo. From here, as I'm rotating, I'm attacking the same point of the tricep tendon, and I take him down to the ground. From here, I can step in this way, in this way, okay, going into different type of racks and, and ground grappling technique if I want to. Okay, let's concentrate on this part, which is the important part here. Okay, he grabs me, light hand, remove yourself here, kicking, or maybe a hand shot here. Bring the hand up this way, elbow still close to your body, counter grab him as you rotate him at the same time, move in and take him down into your armbar. From here, of course, you can follow up with strikes, take him down to the ground this way and finish. There is so many things you can do, okay? They'll be up to your instructors to cover all the different follow-ups. Uh, let's try one time from this side, real quick. You cross grab me, this is what you want to see here. Your distraction, watch, this is the important part here. Gonna counter grab him, attack the tricep tendon as you're stepping in. And that is uh, your uh, first uh, uh, defense against the cross wrist grab. The next uh, defense against cross grab, okay, uh, it's kind of uh, multiple techniques in one, okay, so you'll notice the different elements now. He starts, he grabs you, live hand, and distraction. At the same time as you do distraction, counter grab him, counter grab him. But this time, instead of going from the outside, you counter grab him on the inside, okay? And you join him with your other hand for support right away. Your, your other hand has to come in right away for support, okay? So let's do the whole technique here for a second. One, two, three, bring him over your shoulder. From here, in real life, you would have two choices, of course. One is dislocation, you are either extending him, Okay, the other one, if you went like this, obviously would break his elbow. The choice is your, uh, yours, uh, keeping in mind uh, legal, moral ramification of what you do. Okay, so let's do it one more time. Let's concentrate on the details. One, coming around. Two, your uh, hyperextension. Three, elbow into the midsection of the body, bring him over your head, twisting the wrist, bring him down, lock him in a variety of ways. This is just one of them. Okay? Maybe you want to see from the other side one time. He grabs you. Again, do your distraction first. Foot, hand, whatever is convenient for you. Counter grab him at the same time. Join with the other hand right away. Step in in front of him. See, you're beginning to lock up his arm right away at this stage. Step under, bang, dislocation or break. Then from here, you can do your strike first. Sometimes you don't need one. After you break the arm, you may not need a strike here. One, over, and bring him down. From here, lock him up in a variety of ways. And that's your technique. Number three technique in your uh, defenses against the cross wrist grab, uh, very interesting technique because this time you may not have to do a distraction. Why? Because part of your technique is also the distraction. Everything happens at the same time here. So in other words, instead of kicking and then doing something this time, as I counter grab him inside, remember this is an outside counter grab, we're doing an inside counter grab. As I'm doing this at the same time, I step in and I strike. Watch when I do it dynamically so you get a better idea. He comes in and grabs me, bam, and here is the technique. See? Now let's show it slowly, okay? Very painful technique, by the way. Okay, he grabs me. I counter grab as I'm stepping in, I'm talking, and I'm striking the face all at the same time. I prefer open hand strike because he's going to blind him. He's going to cover his eyes. He doesn't know what's going on over here. Bam, good shot like that. Come around, thumb pointing down. Come above his elbow. Dig in your radial bone in his tricep tendon this way while you're still talking here. And this is what the pain is. You can use your own clothing to grab for support. This is your armbar. Excellent escorting technique too. If I want to take him out of a building or something, he's in pain. And he said, well, can he try to punch you with the hand? If he tries, you can also try breaking his arm. 
So this is a good escorting technique. One more time. He grabs me. I step in and strike at the same time. Wham! Torque him here, come around under, lock him up here. Of course, I could just step behind and take him down. Okay, I can turn this into something else. But this is your technique right here. Grab for support, keep him locked, escort him. You can switch into fingers if you want to also. Okay, and that's a very painful technique, so be careful when you train with your partner. And that concludes tape number two in our curriculum. This uh, tape brought you to orange belt. In the next video tape number three, you'll go to green belt. Um, myself and Master Pedro Rodriguez, my associate, we look forward to seeing the next tape.